I do a, a million streams a day. And right now, 2% of those streams come from editorial playlists. So if you're not familiar, that was Nick D. He's an independent artist that makes dope music and he's an absolute content wizard. And he also has a really intelligent mind for business. I took the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with him and really pick his brain on how exactly it is that he gets 1 million streams per day. And let's keep it real, if you knew someone with 4 million monthly listeners, what would be the first question you would ask them? I guess my first question would be what everybody wants to know, how much money did you make this year <laughs> no, i'm just playing i'm just playing uh so no but in all seriousness we had a nearly hour-long conversation and to boil it down in this video, there are two key takeaways that I feel like are the true keys to his success. And those are releasing frequently and making great content. Now, I know that might sound obvious, but he gave me some real actionable strategies to make all this happen. Let's start with what I mentioned in my previous video as a part of my 2024 release plan, which is focusing on releasing frequently and pitching for release radar, as opposed to releasing every three to four weeks so that you can pitch for editorial playlists. I got that concept from him and here's what he had to say about it um the only thing that i care about is my release radar when i'm releasing because i got followers on spotify and so i do pitch right technically because if you pitch your song then it will go to your release radar that's just how that works so I, but usually when i'm pitching i just write a joke or i say you know hey how are you uh hope you like it just something quick like i'm i'm not trying to write a book in there i'm not trying to convince anybody i could care less if you put my song in it i do I do a, a million streams a day, and right now, 2% of those streams come from editorial playlists. But they did not come from editorial playlists because I pitched them. They came from editorial playlists because I, my song did well when I was promoting, promoting content. So like, for example, my song Sundown with V Wills, making content on TikTok, the content was doing well, a few viral videos, it got into the top 50 most viral songs on Spotify. And then as a result of that, it got put into editorial playlists. There's over a million songs uploaded every day, you know, and you're trying to hit the lottery when you're trying to get into these playlists. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's not practical. So I, I don't care about it one bit. I rely on my ability to make better content or good content to drive traffic to the song. And if by a result of that, I get into an editorial playlist, it's a bonus. I'm not going to hold up my release schedule just to try to get an editorial playlist. I want to be consistent in front of the people that care about my music. I want to release frequently and I want to have more chances, like I said, to more darts to hit a bullseye. I want you to pay attention to what he said right at the end, more darts to hit a bullseye. So instead of holding up your releases for the off chance you'll get into an editorial playlist, you would instead focus on putting out more music because each new song you release is another chance for your fans to like it. You never really know which release you put out that might be the one. But again, a lot of people tend to try to chase the one as opposed to just putting a bunch out and the one chasing you. And that's the importance of catalog. Take a listen to this. One thing is that it adds up, but everybody's trying to get one hit. Right, one song. Imagine you want to do a million streams a month, right? Once, and if you got five songs out, each one of those songs has to do like thirty-three thousand streams a day to get a million streams a month. If you got a hundred songs out, each one of those songs has to do three hundred and fifty streams a day on average. Which one's more attainable? Have five songs trying to get thirty k each a day, or to have a hundred songs out each that have to get three hundred and fifty streams a day each? It's just more attainable. It's more realistic. It adds up. Your catalog adds up. Everybody's trying to get a dang hit when you can just take care of your audience, feed your audience, and have it add up over time and build a catalog. Another thing you might have noticed is that he says he relies on his ability to make good content. Now, we all know that content is king and you really got to make it. But one thing I wanted to know about from Nick is, bro, what's the sauce? Do you have some secret sauce? Like, you, you have multiple multiple viral videos a viral podcast how do i make content that actually engages the fans and get people to listen to your music so i i always recommend you keep your audience in mind when you're thinking of your content ideas right and you have to kind of look at your content objectively you have to look you have to detach yourself from your like if i was scrolling past this piece of content would i stay and watch it because if i wouldn't and you have to like i said remove yourself from this is my piece of content Rem remove your bias scroll past does this video catch my attention is this video worth my time because if it's not there's a better more entertaining video one swipe away there's endless videos on the internet one swipe away so if you're not catching people with your video they don't care right They're like, oh all right that video was boring next video very easy right so i think what you have to do unfortunately to the artsy artist is prioritize the viewer how can i best serve the viewer the viewer is on an entertainment app. They're not there to find your music. They're not there to 
They're not even there to find your video most of the time. They're just there to be entertained, right? So you have to entertain them. And you have to assume that everyone scrolling past your video has no idea who you are. They're in a hurry and they're not there to listen to music. Right? You have to kind of assume that. How can I entertain the person who doesn't care who I am, doesn't even want to hear my music, and is just trying to detach from their reality for an hour? How do you entertain that person? Now, sometimes you get into an algorithm like with a lo-fi or something. You have a video do well. You're like, what the heck was different about this one? It's the same video that I made 10 times, but this one went, uh, you know, exponentially more than the previous one. Maybe you got into an algorithm of people you know studying students and sometime for a reason that algorithm got into studying students algorithm right somehow um and you got lucky but that's what it is i think you just you just got lucky right or that beat was just better right you might think all your other beats are are just as good but like i said quality is subjective something that you think is is amazing you spend you know a couple hours a, a week perfecting it you think it's amazing you put it out other people could still hate it you know they still just could not be their vibe so and that's what i mean when i'm talking about getting reps and releasing more frequently is you get more darts to hit a bullseye you know you kind of remove yourself from the sentimental attachment to your releases and you just kind of operate more like a business you're throwing more darts you get more at bats to hit a home run that's where my mindset is when i'm talking about kind of operating more like a business i just think differently than an artsy artist i think in most case scenario now what does he mean by artsy artist i know there's probably some people in the comments or somebody watching this video that might take a little offense to that but what we want to do here is just separate the art from the business real quick because when it comes down to it when he says something like you have to prioritize the viewer the artsy artist is someone who just has a passion for music and maybe doesn't care about the business side of things or are, you know, they don't want to sacrifice their artistic integrity for the sake of the viewers. You hear it all the time from certain creatives that say, don't focus on the viewer, focus on yourself, focus on what makes you happy and you'll find your people. Now that is definitely something that can happen and that still happens till this day. There's so many people out there just being themselves, putting the camera up and you know, maybe at some point something might pop off. I mean, it comes down to consistency at that point. All he's saying is if you're someone that is more business minded and are really willing to do what it takes to make this a career as opposed to just like, a fun hobby or a fun passion of music. There are some sacrifices artistically that you might have to make and that's just, it is what it is. Now, once you move past that and you're actually making content with your viewer in mind and you start making good content that's taken off, going viral, whatever it may be, what are some actionable steps to take those viewers, likes and commenters and bring them over to platforms like Spotify to follow you and listen to your music and get a part of that release radar system where they're listening to your music every week, every two weeks, however often you're releasing. My experience is that people care more when they think they find it and less when they tell you about it or less than when you tell them about it. So my strategy was always, I'm gonna post this piece of content that I feel is entertaining. I'm not gonna tell anyone this is my song or that it's out. And I also personally, I don't ever promote songs before they release. I always release them first and then post content for it. So if I have a video that does well, it's automatically available for people to go find it. Because if you post something and then two weeks later, a month later, you drop the song, everybody who saw your viral video has already forgotten about it. They've moved on. There's so much content, so much music out there to digest. It's important to have it available for people when you're posting about it. I feel personally. Um, so for, for artists specifically, I feel like, like I said, it's more important when people feel like they found it, discovered it on their own than when you're telling them about it. So I personally don't think you should shout it. Hey, this is my song. Check it out. Um, it's blah, 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 bye, blah, blah, blah. Hope you like it and then play it. That's an ad that feels salesy, right? It just doesn't feel like you're trying to entertain a viewer. It just feels like you're self-serving, right? You're trying to get a stream. Um, so what I did was, like I said, I made content I felt was engaging. I felt it was good for the audience. And then I waited for someone to ask me. So in the comments, I would wait for someone to say, Hey, is this song out? And at the time you could pin comments. I would pin the comment and I would respond to the comment with the, with the name of the song and yes, it's out. And so when people check the comments, they see that I responded to a comment. It feels much more natural. It feels much more, you know, less salesy. It just feels like, oh yeah, I was, I was just a guy doing my thing. And if you enjoy it, feel free. 
but it doesn't feel like I'm begging you to go stream my stuff, you know? And I think people can feel that energy that they don't like that when you feel like you're begging them or you feel like you're selling them something or promoting them something. When he said he almost never promotes his music like actively in his content, that kind of blew my mind and it really resonated with me because a lot of times I do feel pitchy or salesy and I even went to his TikTok and just looked through and yeah, he almost never says anything about it and for the most part, it is when people ask. And I have experience with that in the past when I first started on Instagram, it was super hard to get people to swipe up and click a link. But when my song started going viral on TikTok, you got people literally begging me for the link. Like my Frank Ocean remix, I put that out. I only had it on YouTube. So I had people begging me overnight to put it up on SoundCloud. So I did it the next day. It had like 15,000 plays. So first, make sure the music's good make the creative content that gets them in the zone and just wait for people to ask where to listen to it. I mean, obviously have your link set up in your bio and, you know, post on your story on Instagram about it, whatever, but don't have this song out now on the video. Maybe you can slide it in the bottom of the caption or something like that, but for the most part, just make it seem like an entertaining piece of content where you're not asking for anything and it might work in your favor. And now Nick D is an artist. You might be an actual artist that raps or sings or whatever, Good for you, bro. But when it comes to being a producer, I personally feel like it's a lot harder to make this happen. But he actually dropped this incredible gem on me, kind of blew my mind and I couldn't gatekeep it. I got to share it from my fellow producers. Here's his idea on promoting playlists instead of your beats. Now, if I'm you and I'm doing lo-fi beats, um, obviously one thing you can do is do 50-50 collabs with artists. You can put vocals on it and you can try to get into that world. But what I would personally maybe do for you, and I don't know if you've done it already, if there's people that are doing it, but it's really hard for me to come across a lo-fi beat and be like, all right, bet, I'm gonna go stream this lo-fi beat, right? I know people do, but where do they usually do it? They probably put it in a playlist that they have for studying or for chilling, relaxing, calming down, whatever. Or, you know, you get into an editorial playlist for work from home or for, you know, whatever. Like you get into these playlists and that kind of helps drive your daily streams on, on a song like that. So maybe what I would do is instead of doing an album of lo-fi beats, I would just constantly update playlists, make a few playlists. And I don't know if you've done it already, but you have like your own personal lo-fi playlist and I would promote the playlist. I wouldn't promote the individual beat per se. The beat could be the part of the content that you're making and then, it, you know, but the end goal is to get people to go listen to this playlist. So instead of getting one song, right, that's getting streamed by people, now you're getting a full playlist of your lo-fi beats and you strategically name the playlist. Um, you know, you try it, you try it. You can make a bunch of playlists with the same songs in it with different titles. Doesn't matter, right? And just kind of drive traffic to those playlists. And then all of a sudden you got 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 beats in there. Again, somebody puts that on shuffle now all the streams are going to you. You're not in somebody else's playlist, you know, whatever you've made your own. That's maybe what I would, and like I said, you might have done it already, um, but that's where I think would be a great way to get more streams on lo-fi uh, production. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's a fire idea. Like I've done something similar with my chill beats to stream to and a few other playlists that I have, um, but it's not like I promote them with every single song. So let's say like I've been working on this Jay Dilla inspired album and I could just make a playlist called J Dilla Lo-Fi Vibes or something. And instead of promoting each song that I dropped that's kind of in his vibe, I just put it in that playlist at the top and promote the playlist. The reason why I didn't do it in the past is because I know if you don't pay for Spotify, you can't select a specific track and you have to hit shuffle. But now that I think about it, so if they really want it, they, you know, hit my profile and go through it through there or something or whatever. Or if they hit shuffle, cool. Now my older songs are getting streams. So good idea. Definitely take that into account. So before we close out this video, I wanted to leave one last super inspiring gem from Nick. But before we get into that, you guys know that I like to be super personal and super transparent on this channel. This video, I focused on the parts of the conversation that were specific strategies for releasing your music and making better content, blah, 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 to achieve the millions and millions of streams that he has had but we also talked about more personal transparent like mental stuff if you want me to make another video more focused on that let me know in the comments and also if you want me to just release this whole thing i might just throw it up on my second channel Eldre tv if you want to just hear raw uncut the whole conversation again let me know in the comments nick also has a youtube channel where he 
makes this type of content, helping independent artists out. He also released a book called You Don't Want It Bad Enough that also just goes into navigating the independent music industry. It's super dope. It includes a podcast, an audio book, and a workbook to help you work through these things with him. So definitely check that out. The link is below. Shout out to Nick D. And now I'll leave you with some mindset wisdom from him. What most people are willing to do is work hard on their work, but they're not willing to work hard on themselves. And working hard on yourself is what sets you up to be able to receive the success that you desire. You can work hard on your work all day long, but if you're not personally ready for it, it's not going to come, right? You have to be equally as willing to work on yourself. That means uh, changing the five people you spend the most time with. That means switching from consuming, um, you know, uh, gaming content to digesting podcasts about uh, or watching videos like this or um uh, business development books self development books instead of uh watching um movies or, or netflix series is you, you know what i'm saying like you have to be willing to work on yourself just as much as you're willing to work on your art or on your business and i think that's really important i think a lot of people don't do it